We have a special guest, a former female Marine platoon leader who has been on deployment, has fought on the playing field, the battlefield, and inside her own soul. Dr. Teresa Larson, who's been on the show several times talking about exercise and physical therapy and other things, is here to talk about her memoir just out called Warrior, a memoir. So uh, thanks so much for being with us. I'm excited to be here. We've been leading up to this book for quite a while uh, that's, that's just yes. out. And to talk about the elephant in the room first, uh, yeah. you were in the battlefield as a Marine lieutenant. Yes commanding an entire platoon in Iraq, yes. and also battling this own private uh, bulimia. Invisible wound, yes. Um, I'd been struggling with bulimia for probably a year leading up to deployment, but I didn't acknowledge it as a disorder. I just felt like I had an eating issue, and I didn't want to admit that it was a major problem um, because I wanted to set a standard for women. Like I, wanted, I didn't want to be that woman who had to ask for help. I didn't want to be that woman who didn't deploy with her platoon. I didn't be want, to, want to be that woman who was considered weak. So I covered it up and kept it a secret for as long as I could because my Marines relied on me and I wasn't going to let them down. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so this goes back. In this book, you, you address things that happened. Like when you were young, you took care of your dying mother when you were just 10? Yes. Yeah, so my mother battled breast cancer. God bless her. She's an um, amazing wo woman, amazing mother, but our family you know, for six years, she battled cancer for six years of my life. And um, my father and I and brothers, like she died in our living room. And um, the most humble, loving woman, but that definitely changed, changed my life. You know, it's, it's something that for a while I didn't want to admit that, but it did. I grew up in a very male dominated environment, very competitive um, and didn't have necessarily that feminine influence which made me into who I am today. I'm very proud of who I am today. Um, but my mother is, you know, that was a very hard time. Yeah. So part of the, the struggle for perfection that kind of led into this eating disorder and this disordered eating path that was in college and high school was the fact that I didn't know how to manage, you know, not being perfect. I had to achieve and I didn't want to grieve. I didn't want to grieve the loss. I didn't want to kind of face who I was, I just saw myself as this really good athlete and this really good Marine and this really good student. And that was my identity. The, the no shortcomings. When did you decide, what was the turning point where you said, I have to address this? So the turning point um, was when I was in Iraq and I wasn't just sitting behind a desk. So I was in combat before women were even acknowledged to be in combat, right? And I was sitting there and my dad had been writing me letters. So my dad kind of knew the, the, the struggle a little bit. And I was sitting there and I had just finished a convoy um, during, it was during the 2005 elections, Iraqi elections, the first elections, 12 hour convoy. And I was malnourished. Like I hadn't eaten in a couple days. And I'm sitting there and I'm like in charge of all of these Marines. And yes, I was functioning at 60%, I'll admit that. And I know I'm not alone in admitting that, but that's not okay. Like once I came back, I was like, you know what? These Marines, their lives are in jeopardy. I don't want to kill anybody and I don't want to get myself killed. So I need to say something. I don't know what is going on with me. I just know I have this eating issue. It's affecting me. I can't think straight and I can't be out of the wire leading these Marines, doing this stuff with this demon I have inside me. I have to ask for help. And so when I did that, it was like the worst and the best experience. Because as you can imagine, the society, the Marine Corps doesn't understand what an eating disorder is. It's like, what? You can't go out to eat? You can't eat brownies? Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's, it's not that. Um, and so I asked to go home and get help. And that was the that hardest was a, experience. That's a huge thing for you to do that. I know, what do you want people to take away from this book? And I know that you're going to be signing some books. So we yes. want to talk about that as well. So what I want people to get, whether you're struggling with an invisible wound or not, um, that growth is possible. That on the other side of fear of something, fear of letting people know an inner struggle, that there's courage, that there's growth over outside of shame. Like you can get past your inner struggles. There is always hope, but you have to be willing to open yourself up, be a little vulnerable, ask for help. It's okay. All right. Well, in the book signing. The book signing is April 9th. Which is at, Saturday. Yep, at Warwick's in La Jolla. Woo! 
and <laughs> 7 to 9 p.m. Well, good. So you can get out there and meet Dr. Teresa Larson, who is now a founder of Movement uh, Rx, yes, physical Movement therapy Rx. and wellness company. You've been on here to uh, to show yes. us uh, how to get healthier, <laughs> which we all need. And and really, thank you so much. It, it, it takes a lot of courage just to come and talk about your own personal story like this. Thank and everybody can find some pe thread yes. that uh, they can identify with. And I so think they can you. help. You know, I think you might know someone in your life that could use this book, a little pick me up. All right. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Changes coming.